Welcome to Half Past Ja. What is up, everybody? What is up, Half Past Crew? What's up, Half Past Crew? What, what are you doing today? Yeah, what are you doing today? Oh my this gosh. This is, um, we're back on the podcast, and I just want to let everybody know, we're happy to have you on Half Past Ja. So happy. We're your hosts. My name is Saketu. I'm Hallie. And we're a married couple. We like Ja. That's what we call it, Half Past Ja. And we started this podcast because we wanted a form of marriage counseling. And this turned into a lot more than that. There's so many people now that watch us and we're so happy to um, be able to give some advice here and there and also hear your stories. But uh, we talk about things like marriage, relationships, being an Indian American, an interracial couple. Uh, and we release podcast, a podcast episode every Monday at 7 a.m. So if you're new here, you got to subscribe. Please. You got to turn on your post notifications if you're on YouTube. Duh. Uh, and then on Spotify, give us five stars and follow. It helps us a lot. And if you're watching, give us a like as well. Uh, that, is the, that is the key to the algorithm here, okay? The more likes, the more views, the, the bigger uh, this channel can get and more, more people can uh, submit their stories at www.halfpastchat.com. Facts. Uh, follow us on Instagram and TikTok. That's where all our short form is. Uh, if you want to uh, also follow us on YouTube, which is where we post all our shorts. Um, but other than that, make sure you stick to the end because that is when we're doing questions of the week. Which is usually a fan favorite. It's yeah. usually everybody's favorite thing that we do, which I also love questions of the week because we get to hear from you guys. And how fun is that? Yeah. I and mean, you guys will hear noises out because we're outside. <laughs> we're in our backyard. Yeah, we are in our backyard. This is our backyard, different. everybody. Yeah. If you're watching. Uh, it's a it's a pretty nice little little place. I like it. Yeah, I heard you stuttering a little bit as you were doing that because there's a big plane. Yeah, we're it's sorry about that. A little distracting, but hey, distracting. we're managing. And we thought being outside today would be really fitting for this specific episode of our podcast, episode 31. So K2, what are we talking about today? It's a great question. Today, today, you know that Cardi B thing? Today, that <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, that just popped in my head. Mm -hmm. Today, we are talking about seasonal depression everyone i know it's a very heavy topic but we are here to address it in a fun and light-hearted way yeah because that is what we do so to give a little background what hallie explain what seasonal depression even is i can explain personally how i experience it okay all right and then i want you to talk a little bit about it as well for me I wanted to talk about this specifically this week because just a few days ago, I felt it in the air. I think everybody's starting to feel it. That little chill in the air, the extra crisp of the leaves, of the autumn leaves. We're past Halloween now. We're into November. For me, this is usually when it starts. Yeah. <laughs> because specifically today, today is Saturday, November 4th. Tomorrow is officially when it begins. You know why? Because it gets cold. No, because it is daylight savings here. Tomorrow? In yeah, that's tomorrow. So oh, today's the last day that our sunset will happen at like 7, 15, 7, 30. Now it's just going to get darker and colder mm. and shorter so days and at, more depressing for me. At this time tomorrow, it's going to be dark. a full hour darker. <laughs> It's going to be very dark. See, uh, there it is. I'm already upset thinking about that. <laughs> so, you know, that's not that's not fun, but it's uh it's something that the people of the Midwest, people who live everybody in the except north, Arizona, everybody right? in the north experiences. I guess like people who are listening from uh, a different country who might yeah. not get seasons or if you live in the United Kingdom, you pretty much live in the rain all the time. So yeah. that sucks, but yeah. um I can People who live in like Texas, yeah. they don't really have to deal with this. People who live in India don't really have to deal with this unless they live in the north. That's a very um, good point to make. Geographically, where you're located makes a huge difference because us here in Indiana, we have very cold and miserable winters. And that is a huge component of it. And that is hence why it is called seasonal depression. Because if you think about it, summertime, springtime, fall time, beautiful, beautiful seasons. Mm -hmm. uh, it tends to be warmer during those times of the year. However, when we dive right into winter, um, like I was saying earlier, it gets colder, it gets darker, it gets lonelier, more depressing. Just so many things are changing and it is just uh, much different than the other times of the year. I, if I can't go outside and run while sweating, uh, I don't, 
I, 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 if I can't do that, then I'm just going to be depressed. I want to be able to run and sweat, be able to run in shorts and a t-shirt. If I can't do that, it's no go for me. I don't like it. Well, yeah, that's the biggest thing. It's like, for me, I notice because I'm, oh, my laptop, I'm such a big active outside person. I love it so very much. I love walking. I love running. I love biking. I love rollerblading. I love doing all these things. And yes, you can technically do them in the winter time, but do I want to? No. Yeah. That's another huge component of it. It takes any motivation that I have. I have so much motivation throughout the year to keep my body moving, to get outside, to do social things, to go to work. Because I'm, I am kind of a hybrid employee. I can go in the office whenever I want. I mean, I have a requirement that I have to meet, but... When it's warmer out, I tend to get out of the house more. I tend to go run more errands. I tend to do so many different things that I do not upkeep when it starts to get cold and dark and snowy and rainy and all these things outside. And shorter days, all of that makes a huge difference on any motivation that I have, any happiness that I have. It all just goes away because I get so much of my happiness from being able, just like this, just to sit outside. And I can't do this here in just a few weeks. It's going to be too cold. I mean, if I want to be bundled up and shivering, but I don't want to do that. Would you ever consider moving to an, a, a place that doesn't have seasonal depression? It's just warm all the time. Everyone's mm -hmm. happy. Everyone's working out all the time, having a great time. Would you ever move into a location like that, like California, well, Florida, Well, a place that has the sun all Texas. the time. That's huge because, for one, we all lack vitamin D, especially when there's no sun. Mm -hmm. And not having the sun, not being out in it, not feeling it on your skin, that just, I mean, there are so many things. Um, entities that play into having seasonal depression and that is definitely one of them lack of sun is really hard um so I, to answer your question i don't know i don't think i could because i enjoy the seasons here a lot because i think summer and fall are beautiful and i do like the occasional snow it's beautiful like right around christmas time then after that january and february suck march is mid April, allergies, May. So really, I can't. I can so, only be happy here a few months yeah. out of the year. So November's fine for me. December is really fun because I love Christmas time. Uh, it's also Hallie's birthday month, so it's well, a big deal. October, November, December are all holiday months. Yeah. So you're leading up to exciting things, and, and then, then after January, it's like, what is my life? I don't even have anything to look forward to. And then January is like really cold. There's nothing to do. Nothing. No holidays. And then you get into February and not really anything to do. They got Valentine's Day here and there and uh, it's still kind of depressing. That's like and one then fun thing to look forward to. You got March. March is just cold and sucks. You got St. Patty's Day, but no one really <laughs> does much that day besides wear a little bit of green. And then you got April, which is, I, I think April's the worst out of all of them. Why? For me, April's the worst because... <laughs> Because you have this this hope that one day maybe it might start getting warmer. Never ever does it get warmer in April. You gotta wait till May. May it starts to get a little bit better, and uh, that's when summer truly starts. Well, see, that's the issue. Is in April, March slash April, you start to get a little taste mm -hmm. of spring and warmth and sun because March is when you know you set your clocks forward you fall back spring forward that's what that's the rule i think so you get a little taste of what it's like to be warm and happy and have the sun out again and starting to head into summer you get just a little taste and then it gets snatched away from you just like that so quick and then it's gone and then it's snowing in april which we've had here many 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 times it's it's kind of crazy but it's one of those things where you kind of it's kind of just deal with it if you live north and um I know a lot of people might not experience the same things. I want to know what's it like to not have seasons. If you have a per if you're a person who doesn't deal with seasons like we do, um, is it nice? Is it nice not having to deal with snow and cold and terrible weather? Well, I know a lot of our friends even or like who are interested or have moved to like California, Florida, Texas. They move these places because they say I can't take the Indiana cold or I can't take the cold in general. And it's nice and it's warm there. And yes, you don't have seasons, but hey, it's a lot easier to get out and have a regular schedule and stick to it and not so, just have to close up shop during the winter. So did you answer you would move? I don't think I would. Why not? I don't know. I don't think I could. Personally, I just like the seasons too much. Like, I remember this time last year, uh, we went to California for a little bit, and 
it was beautiful here at home, but it was not beautiful. I mean, it was beautiful there, but it was green. It was all green and yeah. it was warm and it was so confusing to me. It was mm -hmm. just backwards. Yeah, I get that. I mean, I, you get used to things and yeah, it's different. Well, yeah. Would you move somewhere different? I would love to. Why? Because where? I like the warmth. I think I would do a thing where you go to the warm area during the winter, like old people. Well, like, yeah, okay. I was going to say, <laughs> yeah, old people do that. That's okay, too. Come on. Um, yeah, no, I know. I know so many people who've done that, especially older people who, um, if they're retired and they have, like, a winter home. Or, like, even you have so many family members that go to India during the winter months. Yeah, that's true. A lot of people who start to retire, usually they'll do like six months in the U.S., six months in India, because that's, that's where all the old people go to hang out. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's a party over there. I will say, when we went to India this past February, like the last, it was like February 20th through March 6th, like that was really nice. I think it did start to get hotter in India there. Um, during that time, like once it hit March, it was like a hundred degrees every single day. And I don't, 103 actually. And I don't think I could do that realistically. So I would like to go in December, January or right after the holidays when my motivation really starts yeah. to tank. So the most expensive time of the year. Yep. Well, see, no, I actually read somewhere that January is like the least expensive time to travel to india everybody wants to go during december january because that's when everybody has vacation that's when it's the best weather and so it's very expensive during that time i think the cheapest is like april and july Ugh. time yeah why why is that it's like a billion degrees it's so hot that your like slippers will just melt to the ground so to ask you a question then would you ever go to india for six months at, or like I, months at a time i would go there for like max maybe a month and a half like two months maybe that's like max um and that's only if like my parents came because they know what to do there there's just a, there's a lot to do in india like a lot of things that are possible that i haven't done yet that i really want to do like i've never been to the taj mahal i've never been to a lot of like new delhi i've never gotten to see um, some of the northern India, I've never seen like Hyderabad, I've never gone down south. And so it'd be cool to see different parts of India. And um, yeah, I would, I would love that. It would be nice to get a little bit of a seasonal change. Mm -hmm. Not like every year, but you know, or at least for us to take a trip, like we're aiming to go back again in 2025, mm -hmm. which is still like a whole year away. Um, cause we're wanting to go maybe December, January timeframe. Yeah. So we've got a while to go. We have no travel plans this January, but I think, I don't know, it might be nice just to switch it up a little bit because things can start to get a little bit mundane and monotonous. Do those mean the exact same thing? Um, that's how I feel. Yeah. And then you also have to deal with like taking time off during this time is really hard with work because it's like closing season Q4. Everybody wants to like get everything done before January. And so <sighs> December is just a busy, busy month. And it's well, hard December's to take time Well, December is fine off. though. You know what I mean? Because at least you're leading yeah. up to Christmas. Mm -hmm. And like in November, you're leading up to Thanksgiving. I think more specifically, the time frames that I'm talking about are January, February, January, February, really. I mean, I don't know. It still ebbs and flows in the months leading up to that because still, I just, one thing that I think is such a, it, it really impacts it for me is that I, I just don't make an effort to get out of my house. And basically, if you think about when we were all locked inside COVID 2020, it feels just like that. Mm -hmm. Like you're stuck in your house. I mean, granted, we're stuck in our house with each other and we've got Sylvie, but there's like only so much you can do in your house when you're stuck. Like imagine, this is how I think about it. Think there's a snowstorm outside, a blizzard, if you will. Think if you're locked inside your house, it might seem fun at first, right? Like as we're transitioning into the seasons, we're changing. Now everyone can start dressing warmer, can start dressing cozier, love being cozy. I'm a huge proponent of that. I think it's great. However, after a few weeks, you know, of doing the same thing, it starts to get a little old. 
and I don't typically make an effort to do something different. Now, you might say, well, why don't you just make plans to do this? Why don't you make plans with your friends? It's not always easy because I, again, it all ties in together where I start to lose my motivation and Hallie my, loses her mind. I do. She I goes really a little do. crazy. Um, it's really hard. And so I lose all of that. And then I'm like, Oh, I'm comfy here. I don't want to make plans, but then I get stuck in that cycle and then I never want to get out of it. That's my issue. It's a dangerous cycle because if you get stuck in it and you get too comfortable, it's the same thing as getting too comfortable in like your job. Like if you get too comfortable and you never want to move up or, or get anywhere within the, your career and then you get stuck and then you just don't progress the way you want. And so same with same with your seasonal depression. You got to be able to it's so plan hard. different things, go go outside even if it's cold i know it sucks it's not warm it's like not our inside of our house which is nice and warm and toasty but sometimes you got to go outside to be able to refresh your brain and yeah that's the thing i think that's the biggest thing with with the winter time we're not touching the sun enough we should go take a spaceship to the sun and see what happens we die but you know I think we'd survive. Well, I just, I hate, I get stuck in the same cycle over and over and I start to just feel worse and worse about myself every day because I don't feel like I'm as active. I don't feel like I'm being productive. I'm not doing anything to myself. I just like being in my cozy clothes all the time. For me, somebody who really tries to put effort into their days and schedule things and just try and be productive and just, that, that to me makes me feel like I am whole like I am doing what I need to do it makes me feel like I'm fulfilling my purpose and cleaning our house doing things you know doing the things that I typically do I am a very uptight person I am aware of that but that's what I need to do to keep myself sane in the winter time I don't do that and so I start to lose my mind and then I start to just lay there just do nothing I just could lay on our couch all day and be content with that and I hate it I hate that so How about much you get your panties out of a bunch I wish I could my goodness <laughs> I wish I could Ugh. oh I just I hate it so much and I don't think it really started to affect me until after I graduated from college because even when I was in college I had to get my butt out of bed every day that's mm -hmm. the other thing I don't even want to get out of bed when it's cold I started to feel that it was one time last week I was like oh my gosh I don't want to get out of bed it's starting it's starting it's starting and yeah. so it's just it's so hard because even when I was in college though we were forced to get out and we really only had like a two-week Christmas break remember winter break we really only had that. Otherwise, we were up and at them and doing things. When you work from home and when you're fully adult, you are on your own schedule. You make your own decisions. And yes, you're working, but like I work from home. So specifically, that can get very challenging. No, but like when we do go into the office, there's a big difference between going to the office when it's 70 degrees outside and going to the office when it's 20 degrees outside. That's true. You really are just slower like you are slower to get out of bed <laughs> you are slower to drive to work and it's just it just sucks it does are you kidding me turn your phone off <laughs> it does it sucks so bad it's so hard it is so just mentally challenging to make yourself to force yourself to get out of bed when it's cold when it's dark getting up oh my gosh i had a training that i had to be at work every day at like 6 45 a few weeks ago for I had to get up at like 5, 5.30 every day. Do you know how hard it was to get out of bed? It was so cold that week. It was so hard for me to get out of bed and drag myself to work. I was so tired. It's so cold. I did not want to go. Oh my gosh, to know that I had to be in a training for five days. And I just, that's when it really started to hit me. And I was like, well, this is starting early. If it's going to be like this, then we got a long winter ahead, baby. And you had to be by yourself that week. Oh, that sucked. Yeah, can you just like stop traveling? Because <laughs> I'm so sick of it. Thank you. It is what it is. So, yeah. Um, okay, anyways, next I want to move into how can we cope with this? I'm going to talk about how I individually cope with it and how I can recommend to others as well. And then I want to talk about how you and our relationship can help me deal with it. All right. So, I'm looking at Sylvia right now. Rule number one, have a pet. <laughs> Pets help. Um, no, uh, she really does, though. She... Because it forces me to kind of um, 
take care of, I mean, I take care of Sukei too as well. Let's not lie here, I do. But it forces me to take care of a sweet little animal who I love so very much. And, um, you know, she, she doesn't obviously get affected by seasonal depression. She's just happy that I'm home. She's happy that we're home in the winter. That's when I think Sylvie is her happiest um, because we're home with her all the time and we're not going out and doing anything, which in turn makes us not super happy, but she loves it. So that's number one is being able to spend time with your pet, a pet, whoever's pet, whatever. So the next thing for me, I think, is still trying to keep myself active and doing things. And what I mean by that is, oh man, when it is so, so cold outside, I still try and get myself out the door to do something. Whether that just be walk a little bit, um, go on a jog. I try and drag you with me, but listen, here's the issue with him is that he's got these dumb toes. My toes freeze in (laughs) any temperature below 40 degrees. Okay. It doesn't matter if I wear the thickest socks in the world. When I run in cold temperatures that are below 40 degrees, my left, my right two toes will freeze. They no, like they like go that. so numb and they turn a different color. They like turn yellow. One of my coworkers actually has that issue too. You guys should talk. And I have no idea why it happens. If any doctors are listening, um, please let me <laughs> please know why this is him. happening. <laughs> please, <laughs> he's got dead toes. Nobody understands why it's happening. We've looked it up. He's asked his doctors. Your doctor like blew it off like it was nothing. Yeah, he's like, you should just deal with it. <laughs> Okay, he said, dude. well, there are some things that you just have to deal with when you get older. And he's like, what? It's like, what kind of doctor <laughs> says that? Anyways, I'm not going back to him because I don't think he likes me. <laughs> I think he's just trying to get you out the door. He's like, this guy has too many issues. Let's get him out. <laughs> <laughs> Please, I don't want to deal with him. Um, but that's the number one thing that I try and do is trying to keep myself active um and i have a whole workout set up upstairs but one of the biggest things that helped me this year is i started which i'm very lucky that my um, job has a gym and fitness classes i started going to those to start to build a little bit more a sense of community of the people that i was working out with and to hold me accountable granted i've been slacking there's a bug in my face were you just staring at it yeah you it's gonna do anything okay <laughs> um granted Um, I've been slacking a little bit recently, but it's usually the same group of people that goes. So it's nice. So I've been working out with people. We've been having a good time. And I started doing that in February of this year. And that really kind of helped me get out of my slump because I was feeling good. I was just, you know, it all, it just helped me mentally and physically to feel better. So I would definitely recommend if you can get your body moving, that is huge and making an effort to try and be outside on the sunny days, or even if it's not sunny, but specifically on the sunny days, even if there's snow outside, try and get a little bit of vitamin D, soak up a little extra vitamin D from the sun, won't you? It'll help you. I promise. Bug. Oh my gosh. It's bug city out here. Oh, Okay. Anyways, do you have any comments on that about staying active, about keeping your mind and your body physically, you know, active? Yeah, uh, I like to, it sucks, but just bundling up, going for a mile. Like, I don't even, I can't even do two miles. I can only go for like a mile. But even doing that little bit will make me feel better about myself. And or how just cold go and is. sit outside um, too, if you can. Yeah, I'm okay. I don't want to <laughs> okay. do that. Uh, but... I do think like going outside for either a run going it's it's so hard because like like if I were had a choice I'd be like oh let's go play some pickleball or basketball or something but like your hands are so cold but that just brings up a new idea there's like indoor places oh that's true indoor basketball courts indoor uh, pickleball courts and stuff like that it will cost money which sucks which is stupid but it is um I think those are really good options to get your body active in the cold. I think we're going to take advantage of that this year. Oh, we definitely need to. And I want everyone here, please hold me accountable. I'll hold you accountable as well. When we, I think specifically, if we're out, if it's like snowing and we're out on a walk, we're going to post a picture on Instagram about it and be like, look guys, we're battling our seasonal depression here. (laughs) Hope you are too. Please keep us accountable because I say this and then I'm just going to slip into the depths of the darkness. (laughs) I'm not coming out till March. Anyways, I think just if you can 
get outside even if you don't want to walk or run just like stand out there maybe go to your mailbox and back grab your mail just do something just stimulate your mind and your body a little bit try and get your legs moving i promise it always helps stare into the sun sometimes don't do that please don't do that do not take his advice ever thank you just it, it's been so beneficial for me to try and keep my body moving to keep up the habits that I've built over summer, spring, fall time. Because my habit right now is to go on a walk every single day. And that is just really good for me mentally. My body feels good physically. I'm just trying to keep that habit up. And so I would encourage if you can do anything to get your body moving, I think that would be a step in the right direction as well. Number three is being able to switch it up because like I was saying earlier, things can get pretty mundane and monotonous. I use those words so often, but it's true that it can so get like that in your day to day. And if there are things that you can do to try and switch it up, like maybe try and cook something different that you've never cooked before or watch a new show or go to the park go in the snow and cry no Ooh, make yellow snow that's always fun <laughs> that is uh, but so much you know fun. there's a lot of things you could do you can you could go uh watch a movie when you don't usually watch movies yeah. like at a theater go to a drive-in in the winter time do they even do that i don't think so i don't think they do that's pretty um, sad they should because i would go but there's a lot of different things you can do in the in the winter time, especially like going out to the city to have a little bit of fun, going out to dinner. We like to do photo walks. Go if bowling. It's warm enough. Oh, go going bowling is fun. Photo walks are always fun. Taking photos of like you and your significant other, or just um, finding ways to do something other than being inside. That's a plus. You can even, but you can even still be inside, and you can switch it up a little bit, and. Like, one of the biggest things for me in doing that is, like I had said earlier, I love dressing cozy. I love being warm. But something, one big habit that I start to get into is I just start to throw on sweatpants every single day. You don't want to do that because you will start to lose all of your great fashion sense that you had over the summer and the fall. Like, look at my outfit right now. This is adorable. I want to keep this going. I want to make a commitment to myself to at least throw some concealer mascara on and maybe fill in my eyebrows because they're light as hell and put on a nice pair of jeans put my pants on one leg at a time put on a sweater what she's trying to say is dress for success baby it'll just help you in the out in the long run i promise oh my gosh because i noticed that i was doing that i mean i do it all the time but this fall especially as soon as it started to get cold out of summer i told myself I was not going to just throw on whatever I felt like putting on that I wanted to put effort into my outfits and make things look good and wear things that I haven't worn and go through my closet and figure out what I actually like and so putting effort in my outfits has really been nice and even on days where I don't want to like you know throw on makeup or do something to my hair like there'll be some days I just randomly curl my hair and it makes me feel good about myself or put my makeup on or do my outfit and it makes me feel so good about myself and that is what we need to prioritize heading into this winter season because those are all things that we tend to not do we all just tend to get cozy and comfortable where we are no you need to push yourself you need to push yourself always push yourself to be better push yourself out of your comfort zone and don't settle I don't know why that took don't push yourself down turn. a bridge That'd be bad. Don't do that, though. Do not do that. No. Uh, Well, I was just saying, you know, you should just try and be better for yourself and show up for yourself every day. Because if you don't, then who will? Facts. Yep. So last point that I want to make is making plans. This is something that can be very hard to do, especially when it's so cold and you don't feel motivated and you have any, you've lost all sense of I don't want to say happiness, but I mean, it kind of feels that way. Yeah, I think it's just a thing that you, it's it's the hardest thing to do because nobody wants to do anything. Well, like, yeah, I feel like everybody's busy during this time because of the holidays. Um, I think that people are also just don't want to go outside because it's cold outside. And it's so beyond depressing. I it, literally can just lay on the couch and be sad all day that it sucks outside. 
it's hard to it's hard to find a, a, a group of people to go out and do things and, it, and even like yourself if you're all alone and you you, you can't just go out into the cold and be happy because it's cold so there's you a lot try. of different just lot try of, and be out there a lot of different plans that you can you can try and figure out um ways to do things well yeah i think the biggest thing is to try and make some concrete plans with your significant other with your family with your friends with a friend whoever it is try and again this kind of goes with switching it up a little bit but try to just consciously be aware and um be adamant about making plans and sticking to them and i know how hard it can be because i have definitely done this and not followed through um but even if you're meeting a friend for coffee uh you're say you're like i like to have my parents over for dinner I say, hey, come over for dinner. I'm cooking. That's something super fun to do. Um, going out with your significant other, planning date nights. Just because it's getting cold doesn't mean these things should change, but they do. And it can be really hard sometimes to see that until you're out of it. And every summer, when we are fully in summer mode, I think back and say, okay, dude, wow, I was really depressed over the winter time. What happened there? Right? Like yeah. I didn't see it till after. Sometimes we decide to like rob a bank but not really like we'll plan it like we'll plan like how would we rob a bank like this is the first step second step third step and then right before we follow through we'll stop i don't think anyone understands where that was going i'm just saying it's fun i (laughs) that's not my idea of fun anyways so i think it's very important that you just make plans whatever it may be even if you're by yourself take yourself on a date we've said this before date yourself go out to dinner go out to coffee go out to lunch whatever get yourself a nice croissant on the way to work or class or whatever it may be do something special for yourself and try treat yourself treat yourself baby just try and switch it up for yourself a little bit do something that you wouldn't normally do because this will get you out of your normal everyday same routines and switch it up a little bit for you and hopefully you know make your winter seasonal depression a little bit better one last thing I have to say about that is uh, finding a hobby is very important. I think that sometimes people will pick uh, just one hobby. Like they'll be like, oh, I love golf or I love basketball or things that you can do in the summer is what I'm trying to say. Find other hobbies that you can do in the winter time. Find hobbies that you can do at any point in time that are easy, uh, but also fun and uh, entertaining. I love to make videos. I can do it all year round. And I think it's one of those things where if I didn't have that outlet during the winter, it would be very hard for me to express myself creatively. And it's it's really fun. So make sure you find like a hobby of some kind. Get into photography. That's a good one to we do. We can chat about that. I would love to talk to you guys about photography and videography. Um, so if, you, if you're interested in it, go ahead and just try. Do it. Use your phone. Whatever it may be. Mm-hmm. It's always fun doing something new. So coming up with a new hobby is always fun. Yeah, definitely one of them that I've taken on. I've been slacking for a long time now because it's been so nice out and I just want to enjoy my time outside is reading. Reading is wonderful. Maybe learn how to knit or crochet or cook or bake or I mean, these are all things that I love to do. There are so many different kinds of hobbies. Play video games. Play video games with your friends. Speaking of, the new Fortnite season just dropped and we stream all the time. So it's so fun. Fortnite is so fun. You guys should all play Fortnite and then play with us. Uh, And we stream every almost every night at K 2 v Patel on Twitch. Make sure you hit us up. Mm -hmm. That was definitely one thing. We just talked about this too because I said I noticed so much more. We play Fortnite consistently in the winter time. COVID depression, Ugh. that was a different level, okay, of depression. Fortnite and playing video games with people that we could not go and see was the thing that helped us most during COVID. Would you agree? Yeah. Oh, I agree. 100%. Because so, you were with your friends, but you weren't really with your friends. It's it was like so fun. <laughs> it was <laughs> so talking. fun. Yeah. So That hit that hit different and so they brought back the og season so we're getting a little bit nostalgic about it but it was that's another thing that we love to do is play video games we play video games we can do that with each other and so that can lead into my question for you when i'm feeling this way when i'm feeling depressed when i'm really going through it when i'm struggling during these months of times that i'm really feeling it how can you support me as my husband or as a partner 
I can slap you in the face. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. God. Oh, domestic <laughs> abuse is a very serious thing. Um, <laughs> and <laughs> um, that's not funny. Why are you laughing no, at it? No, it's not. I hate that you made that because you're like, yep. Yeah, I'm just I'm trying to be thing. serious. What is wrong with you? Okay, Anyways, I asked you a question. Uh, uh, what are we talking about again? How can you support me in my okay. seasonal depression? Yes. Seasonal depression, how can I support you? First, putting my phone down. Oh, I Number love one. that. Number yeah. one. <laughs> the way you reacted to that. Ooh. Okay, putting my phone down. Uh, because number one thing that people do when they're bored and have nothing to do is pick up their phone and start scrolling. And so, putting my phone down is the number one thing that I know that'll help. Genius. Number two, me planning... A date every month, at least one a month. Okay, me. I do the planning. I pick it. Yeah, I do but everything. Once a month. Well, you want two months, two times a month? I want like once a week. Once. Okay. Call me high maintenance, but that sounds Golly, great to me. But like you plan a lot of date nights. Let's just plan. Oh, okay. Oh, I see what you're saying. Okay. Like, like I do it. Yeah. Like I do it. Well, you should just do that anyways. Okay. <laughs> I understand that, but like sometimes I forget in the winter time because I'm so cold. Cold is not my forte, okay? I don't like forte. the cold. I don't like it. And so, uh, that's number two. Number three, I would say probably giving you an outlet to to just, like, not be with me. Because sometimes you need to be alone. And be You need depressed. to relax. You need to go read a book. Sometimes I, 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 this is like something I, I do often. I annoy Hallie a lot. I'm just there often. all the time. Okay? Yes. And in the winter time, sometimes she can get really annoyed at that. Okay. We're Cause just like stuck together. We're just there. <laughs> so I'm going to try this year, this winter, I'm going to try to give you a little bit more space and I'm going to, I'm going to do a good job at it because that'll give you the ability to uh, miss me a little bit and then you'll come to running to me. You're gonna come running. You're gonna come running. Just watch. Just watch everybody. She's gonna come running to me. I don't like how you said that, but okay, continue. That's it. That's all my. That's my top three. That's it. Do you have any? <laughs> do you have any more <laughs> things I could do to help you during your seasonal depression? Besides, pay attention to you. Be very be my thoughtful, husband. Plan mm. some dates. Yeah. I'll clean the house. If you were to switch it up again with the switching it up thing, you could be like. Hey, don't worry about dinner. I'll cook for you. <gasps> or all, hey, one thing. Okay. One thing that we love to do is picnics, right? Outside. One uh, thing that we can continue to do in the wintertime is... Taco Bell. Yeah, but like take it somewhere and eat it. Switch yeah. it up. Get out of the house a little I'll bit. Switch, I'll eat it in the car though. Yeah. That's because I'm not I, going outside. That's, that's basically what I'm saying. <laughs> yes. Or we can like make... Okay. Another sort of date night that we can do at home is plan date night. We make some hot chocolate. Just having a little hot chocolate date together. Mm. I love... We can continue our coffee dates. Mm -hmm. We try and fit those in as much as we can. And I love those so much because we both love getting our coffee. Just not Starbucks, please. Let's go to a better coffee shop than that. Wow. I love Starbucks. I don't know about you guys, but Starbucks is pretty good. Let's go to my favorite place and then I'll be super happy. <laughs> I'm so high maintenance. I don't care. I don't care. Okay. This is how I, you you asked how you can help me. This is how you help me. Let's just go on. Let's continue to go on nice date nights where we have fun. Get out of the house. Go take our food somewhere in the car. Eat it. Whatever. Watch something. Go get coffee. Do those sorts of things. Hang out with Sylvie. Play with Sylvie together. Love doing that. Have a fun little. We have a we have a projector. We could set up a projector on a wall in our house, and we could have a fun date night that way. Make hot chocolate at home, have cozy little fun dates, play Fortnite together, play other games. Basically, everything that I'm saying is just spend time with me. Yeah. I mean, okay, there are definitely going to be times where I'm going to be like, okay, can you just please give me like 30 minutes away from you? Not like phrased like that, though. Can you just give me 30 minutes to let me do my thing? That's it? You, can I give you an hour? longer sure why, why not? not why not yeah. yeah why not um yeah i mean i don't know those all sound like things even now you can do that would be really wonderful oh um, really yeah yeah starting um, early i just i told you i felt the chill in the air i'm freezing starting. right now i don't know if you guys can tell 
I'm freezing. My hand here is kind of numb. It's just holding this mic here, but I'm okay. So it's okay too. Mm-hmm. Any last words, any last thoughts on this topic of seasonal depression before we wrap this up? I have no other thoughts besides uh, take your time <laughs> and uh, get through it. We'll, we'll Did you all say get take through. Take your time? Take your time. <laughs> take your time and get through it. We'll what get through that? it together. <laughs> okay. Do what you need to do for you to make your every day better for yourself. Exactly. You don't have to take any advice that we said. Just do what you need to do and what's specific Can to you. And you take know, care of yourself. You know what you could do for us? Uh, leave a comment <laughs> on what you do during the winter that makes you happy. Um, that would help. And then we'll, we'll try and do those things that you, you like doing that makes you happy. Because then it would probably make us happy. So let us know in the comments down below. Sure. Sure thing. Do that. What's next, Hallie? All right. So now we're actually <laughs> we're going to transition. I added this. You don't know what this is. I just have it here on my laptop. I'm asking you from a, I'm just a few things. We're doing a few this or that's. So we're going to do five that are specifically tailored to me. Excuse me. And five that are just in general with everything going on or just, I don't know, not everything going on, just regular Look, things. Everybody, she's taking her own advice. She's switching it up. This I is am. Kind of I special. Wanna, yeah. Look well, at us. I want to start to throw more things like this in the podcast to make it a little bit more engaging, make it a little bit more fun. People can have a good laugh. Obviously, I said I like to be lighthearted and funny in these episodes, and I want to keep doing that. So, it's okay, too. I'm asking a man's perspective on some women's things, just mm -hmm. a few of them. All right, let's go. Okay, for me, hair up or hair down? Hair up. How so? In a bun. Why? <laughs> I just love, I don't know what it is. You love buns? I love buns. Why? It just looks, I think it shows your whole face. Yeah. And I love your face. Oh, I get that. I think I have a nicely shaped yeah, face. I appreciate that you think that. So thank you. Thank you. Um, I think, yeah. Well, at our wedding, I had my hair in a low bun. How do you feel about that? I love that. Oh my God. Yes. Because yeah. it was still pulled back from my face. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think that was nice. It gave yeah. me a little bit of a saucy I like look. your hair down too. When it's like, when, like, I love when you curl your hair and stuff like that. That's mm -hmm. awesome. But hair up for sure. So Next. straight hair or curly hair then? Curly. Really? You like when I curl it that uh, no, much? No, I like your straight, straight hair, but curly hair is just different, right? It switches it up a little bit. Because so I don't like, do it as much. Yeah. So it's nice when it happens. As this. Yeah. All right. Next question. Nail polish or no nail polish? No nail polish. 100%. Why? I love None. like just normal. Like that's, this is like, I like natural <laughs> looks. So. You don't like, like what if I go get a fresh set, like a set of nail Not set? Really. like a no, Really? I just like nails, like just normal nails. So you would like no it colors. better if I took this off? I like I like when you put nail polish on sometimes, but like I think you should I think there should be a longer period between nail polish and no nail polish. Like you should have no nail polish for a longer period of time before you put it on again. Like how long? Like I don't know, a month. <laughs> <Really>? <laughs> just try it. One month. Just try it. Well, I like to paint my nails. It makes my hands feel good. Okay, then keep doing it. I just like, I, I, I don't know. know. Yeah. I like it. That was interesting. Try it for two days then. Of not having it? Yeah. Okay. I it, just want to see your nails. What's your favorite color that I paint my nails? Mm, probably like green. Like a dark green? Yeah. Because green looks good on me. I, I think like green. green is, very dark green is a good yeah. color for me. Green is starting to become one of my favorite colors. It's, it's my eye color. Yeah. So that's fun. Next question. Fancy or cozy attire? Cozy is nice, but I like fancy because it makes me feel good. For me. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> On a woman. Um, <laughs> I'm so selfish. What am I thinking about myself all the time? Anyway. Uh, probably. Uh, if I had to pick, like, this would be forever. Probably fancy. Like what kind of fancy? Like, like a describe, dress. Like what kind of dress? Like, you know, what kind of dress? Like Do you want like my looks, wedding dress or yeah, like what? Looks, yeah, <laughs> like that. Like how? Like form like the, fitting? Like the black one you have? The black one I have. Yeah. Oh, is it one that I've worn yeah. to weddings before? Mm -hmm. Oh, it's like a more. It's black. First off, I think. Yeah. For my skin color, black is just good. Yes. I mean, every, black looks good on everybody. Yeah. But um, it's more form fitting of a mm -hmm. dress. Do you like that? Yep. So just that, like sleeves, no sleeves. I like sleeves actually. Okay. Do I you like a long sleeve classy. or short sleeve? Longer sleeve. Okay. They're classy. I like it. I have a really pretty dress that I wore to a wedding not that long mm -hmm. ago. 
I with, remember. Do you like heels? I love heels, but I don't like when you wear them. I knew you were going to say that. Why is that? Because you are 5'8", Hallie, almost 5'8". So I'm a giant. So I'm like 5'10", and <laughs> heels push you over me, and I don't like it. Don't I like really it. wish that there was more of a height difference between us. I wish I was shorter. I, I, I say this to you all the time. I wish I was more petite. I wish I was a lot smaller than I am because I, I wish just I was feel taller. Like I wish I was at least six foot. I was two inches off. Almost there. Dang it. Hey, short king. You're really not sh- that short, though. Like, you're actually kind of tall. I, I, I think I'm, I'm the tallest person in my family, so. How would you feel if I was taller than you? Uh, I would um, get that one surgery for you where you <laughs> cut your feet off a little bit and get Me? shorter. Yeah. What is wrong with you? <laughs> Uh, I'm just kidding. What doesn't make sense to me is that, like, all the women in my family are super small, and then I'm just huge. Yeah, you are very tall. You are so, like... like my mom comes to my shoulders, basically. And in my family, you're taller oh than gosh. the men, so... <laughs> As if I already don't stand out enough with how pasty I yeah. am in the wintertime. Mm, no, like, you're not imagine pasty. me. Imagine me in India mm. with... Like Dude. his mom and like she's like a giant. There. Oh my god, she's the I iron giant. So yes, I literally well, like I tell your sisters all the time. Like I stand out so much. Like you guys are so little. I wish I was smaller, but I'm not. I just I feel like a giant. I feel like I'm kind of clunky. Is that the word? I don't know if that's the word. Um, I don't know how we got there, but anyways, next this or that walk date or like just a chill date or restaurant date. My favorites are chill dates, like where we're not going out to eat like super fancy. Like I love going to Mug and Bun, which is like a Ooh. like drive-in place. I love going love to Chick Fil A, Taco Bell, like really like not fancy places. Like really Those are like the best. Food. <laughs> the, yeah, the non-healthy food. I yeah. love going places like that because it's just more fun, relaxed. We don't have to like plan our whole day around it. Yeah, yeah, I get that. <laughs> God, I put this in here and this is funny. Jacob or Edward? <laughs> what? It's a question that I had. You Jacob. watched the movie. Really? Mm-hmm. Werewolf? Mm-hmm. Wolf? Mm-hmm. Interesting. Why? Because. Is it because you like Taylor Lautner? Yeah, he's a good guy. I Also, Edward is like super like shiny and ominous. Whereas, Mysterious. Um, um, Taylor Lautner slash um, Jacob. Jacob is super silly. Well, I wouldn't say he's, like, silly, but he's like, where have you been, Loka? <laughs> where have you been, Loka? Loka? <laughs> Baby, come back. Okay, so you said Jacob. Mm-hmm. These are not women specifically, um, women-specific questions, but uh, hot coffee or cold coffee? Hot coffee in the winter, cold coffee in the summer. Phone or <laughs> Phone or no phone in the bathroom? Phone. In the bathroom? Explain yourself. What are you? What the? What are you gonna do? <laughs> what else are you gonna do? Just sit there and well, poop? Okay, but like, here's the thing. Most people, I would go to say, don't spend as much time as you do in the bathroom. All right, everybody. I spend an average of 20, 30 minutes. No, come on. 20, 30 up minutes it, in the bathroom. The reason is I want to sit there until I fully know everything <laughs> is. Out of my system. Okay. <laughs> Is that so wrong? Okay, but when we first started, like when we first got married, you would spend like an hour. Mm. Why? Yeah. Well, I just, I wasn't eating right. I wasn't <laughs> eating right. I had some issues. Okay. Let's not address them on the podcast. <laughs> Next. He's a little bit lactose intolerant, everybody. Okay. He's kind of figured that out now, which is bad because All right. obviously we love tea. Hallie, we get it. And he loves milk. We get it. He loves eating it in his bowl with we get Cheerios it. in Townhouse. Do you like being a passenger or driver? I love driving. I hate passenger. I hate it. I despise it. Why do you hate when I, I drive you? I, can, I just want to know. I just like being in control, Hallie. Is that so wrong? We should have a whole episode on that and yeah. your whole thing that you My, got going on yeah i know i love driving i love like being to, in control i love to know that i have the steering wheel in this massive metal machine so yeah i like to make sure i'm in control of that see but you like to be in control of a lot of things yeah in your even life. when we're i'm doing like work trips like i'm the one driving i will get the rental car um but not just in driving i'm the one 
in so, so many other ways. You just think you're so much better than everybody that you have to be the one in yeah, charge. Yeah, it's true. Hmm. All right. <laughs> That's what makes a leader. <laughs> okay, Instagram or TikTok? Um, frick. I would say frick. such in, a hard choice. I would say <laughs> I would say TikTok because that's where I have most of my followers. You're losing them by not posting every day. I know. I know. I know. You today I'll post step something. Your game up. I'll post something today. Money or love? Um, think before you answer this. I would say money because money you- brings love. <laughs> You're saying if I made zero dollars an hour, you would still love me. I started dating you when we were broke. I'm just kidding. I would I would pick love, everybody. Just just I'm just kidding the whole time. I'd pick love. Even if I was if I even if I had zero dollars Hank how promise me that you I'd love pick love. Me. I'd pick love. Okay, next question. Well, actually, that was my last one, so oh, now... Uh, this is my favorite part of the episode. I think it's everybody's favorite part of the episode, and we do... Questions, questions of, of the, the week. week. <laughs> All right, let's get into it. I like this first one, so we're going to do this first one. Do you guys like dogs slash plan on getting a dog? <laughs> this is, Heck nah. Okay, I, say, I, I ask this because I've seen this at least five times. People really want to know if we're getting a dog. I don't know if it's because we show Sylvie and they want to know if she's going to have a friend or what it is. But I think at this time in our lives, it's not right for us to get a dog because I grew up with dogs my whole life. And yes, we do have a wonderful backyard. We don't have a fence. It's not fenced in. So that's a problem right there. Number two. I mean, it's not a huge problem, but it would really help if we did have a fence. We and we're not home enough. We spend a total of maybe, I would say we spend 20 hours a week at home. Not including sleep? Not including sleep, sorry. Okay, because I was going to yeah, say, no, we sleep, sleep more than Not including sleep. We probably spend 20 hours at home out of the whole week. So, like, we're never home at all. I'm gone for, like, the full week sometimes for work. Uh, Hallie's in the office most times, and uh, it's just like the, it, there's no way we would give that dog a good enough life. Yeah, and it just wouldn't be fair. It would make me too sad because I know what it takes. I know what you have to do to be we able travel to take, a lot to take care of a dog. Yeah, um, I know what it takes, and not being able to do that and provide for a dog that I want to love so much just doesn't seem fair right now. So maybe one day down the road when we have kids or something, but not right now. Next question. So, K2, were you ever embarrassed of your culture? How did Hallie, ha- How did Hallie help that? This is a really good question. This is a deep question. This should be its own episode. But um, at a certain point, I was like probably elementary school time where nobody knew how to say my name. Nobody knew like what my culture was. And it just felt like I was in a place that wasn't built for me. And so back then I did feel like I needed to be a different person. And that was just because of the environment that was surrounding me. They weren't very open-minded people. There weren't very much, there was not much diversity at all. There's like what, there's like five Indian people out of the entire corporation, like our school's corporation. And, um, it just wasn't very well known. Like I just didn't, I didn't like understand a lot of people's perspectives and what they did. Um, and yeah, it was just different. So back then I would say, yeah. And then Hallie came into my life. I I would say I really started to like love myself and love being Indian. Like once I got into like high school, because I found so many people like me, I found so many people that shared the same qualities as me. Um, they didn't all have to be Indian, but they're like different cultures. Like uh, I, I had a lot of different friends who um, kind of appreciated my culture in a way. And so it made me feel valued. And then Hallie came into the picture and Hallie was all in on everything about me. She wanted to know all about me. She wanted to know where I came from. She wanted to know my language. She wanted to know our um, our the all the thing all all our holidays she wanted to come to all our holidays she wanted to be involved um and so that was super awesome for me to love my my culture even more to love myself even more and um it's been it's been really good since then 
Mm-hmm. And I fully immersed myself in <laughs> in Gerba. Yeah, that's always <laughs> fun. That's um, always fun. Hallie's really good at Gerba, everybody. Way better than me. And we all know that. But that makes me happy to hear that. Um, I think just because... I cared so much about you even before we were um, dating or mm-hmm. engaged or married. I cared so much and wanting to get to know more about you because I knew that there was so much more there that I didn't know about and that I wanted you to explain to me. And I feel like just in general, when you start to really explain to somebody else and understand more about yourself, you really start to embrace it more. And I'm happy that that is how you feel about that because that's great. Next question. Can't remember if this has already been answered on your show, but what are some aspects to think about when you feel bored in a relationship? Is it okay to feel bored? And why does this happen in relationships? Thank you. Feeling bored in your relationship? Yes. Yeah, that'll happen at least probably like once a year, maybe for a little bit. So like, what are some examples of like when you felt bored and how you've dealt with it? Feeling bored. Like when everything, like you said, gets On a schedule, everything happens as normal. Nothing changes. Nothing new is happening. People are getting used to each... You guys are both getting used to each other. You're not doing anything special for each other. You're not going out on special dates. You're not surprising each other with things. You're not dating your significant other. That's what you need to do. That is what makes that boring. And so if you forget that, it's going to be boring. You can get back into the routine of making sure you are doing these special things to make your significant other feel special. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, couldn't agree more. And to answer your question of is it okay to feel bored, I think it's okay as long as you're willing to do something about it. If you're feeling bored and you're like, well, I guess this is it for us, then that's when I think that becomes an issue. Um, You should always, if, if you have a healthy relationship, you should be wanting to work on your relationship and to make it better for yourself and for your significant other. And when things you know, it's not always going to be, you're not always going to be in the honeymoon stage of your relationship. And we talked about that before. You're going to ebb and flow out of it at different periods in your life, in your life together. Um, But you have to be able to put, be willing to put the work in and be able to do things to switch it up, to spice it up a little bit, right? To do different things, things differently. Um, You just need to be able to put in effort to make your relationship change a little bit so that it benefits both of you and just put in the work being in a relationship is not easy one thing we've learned from being married is that it is so hard because you have to constantly put in work and people that think it's easy you got something going on because there's no way ain't no way next question i know you guys talked about this but it's about religion do you guys both follow your religions also does k2 eat beef i do not eat beef yeah at Mm -hmm. all um so we don't have beef in this house ever we do follow our religion. We get this is this is a whole another like this is going to be a whole episode next season, season two. Um, it, 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 yes, we follow our religion. We are very we're very devout in our own beliefs. There are things that Hallie does not believe in that I believe in, and there's things that Hallie believes in that I don't believe in. That's okay. It's okay to have different beliefs um, if that's the way you were raised. But our morals are the things that are the same. Okay. Um, now. When you say, are you, are, are you religious? Like I would, I would say that I, I'm not a person who goes to the temple every Sunday, uh, but I do pray every day. Um, and as for Hallie as well, like she might not go to church every, every Sunday, but, uh, when, when time does come, when like, for example, like Easter or, uh, Christmas or situations like that, where she does have the opportunity to go to church, she'll go to church. And I think it's one of those things where, um, you know, your belief system, you know what you really truly believe in, and it's okay to have a different belief than somebody else, even if it's your significant other. And this whole thing will go back to, what about your kids? Mm-hmm. Our kids are going to grow up to to having cousins with different religions. So what's the difference of having a, a parents with different religions? Like it does it. it, it They're going to know both. They're going to know what Hinduism is. They're going to know what Christianity is. Um, They're going to be very involved in both cultures. It's just going to be, it's just going to be something different. And it's okay to have something different like that. Mm -hmm. All these people that are really upset about it. It just, it shocks me. And again, this will be a whole episode whenever we decide we're ready to do so. Because I don't know when I'll be ready for that. But it just blows my mind. Because to me, 
it do, it doesn't really I mean it is important it's something that we do think about and talk about you know our religions and how devout we are in them and we both practice in our own ways but that's our own thing that's nobody else's business so I don't know why people get so upset about it and we choose to do with it what we will right facts yeah all right last question I absolutely love your podcast. You're both inspiring in your own ways. Thank you very much. That's so nice of you. Question. I am an Indian woman, a college student, and in a relationship with a white guy. We are awesome together and both have a strong desire to get married one day. However, I feel that his mom doesn't fully accept me because of religious differences and is kind to my face but passive behind my back about the issue. I am such a people pleaser and take rejection to heart. Same girl. How do I learn to stand my own ground at his mother's dismissal, something I should approach with defense or peace? LOL. Okay. <laughs> How do you both learn to stand your ground for each other when it came to familial disputes or disagreements, especially Suke too? Thanks. This is a great question. That's surprising. Um, I'm not surprised. There's some people out there that, you know, will believe, believe their belief system has to, you know, be the number one thing. I actually ran into a situation like that in my past relationship, if you want me to talk about it. Go for it. Um, And so, in my past relationship, there was a time where I was told, you cannot be with this person if you don't convert. And I was like, okay, I'm not converting. There's nothing you can do about that. I was, I'm I'm, I'm from India. I believe in this. And that's it. End of story. She can make her own decision. I said that. And so um, it was very hard to say because you want you in a new relationship like that, you kind of want to be able to uh, please everyone. But there are certain times where you just cannot. You cannot. And and I really strongly suggest you stand your own ground and you do it in a nice way. Mm -hmm. Like you you kind of you, you, you you'll be able to say, hey, this is what I believe in. This is how I grew up. Um, I'm from India, and I, I, I really do believe that this is th- these are my core beliefs, and this is how I was raised, and I, I don't think I could change that about myself because then that's not the true me. And so just kind of explaining it that way, I think that's the best you can do. Yeah, and I think overall you were asking how you should approach it. Like he was saying, you should approach it with kindness. Kill her with kindness. That's just what you got to do in a lot of situations specifically something like that um because the hmm, yeah i just i don't think that's right um i think that's a very challenging situation especially when it's your boyfriend's mom because it's not like you can really limit your interactions with her like you're gonna see her and just be as nice as you can and you can just politely say you know this is my belief system and that's not really something that i feel comfortable discussing with you because this is what i believe and i'm gonna stick to it That's really the end of that, I think. I mean, what I I don't know. Unless she wants to... Hopefully, she's not argumentative and she won't start something after that. Mm -hmm. But hopefully, you can just be nice about it. Be calm. Be professional. Be kind. And just be done with it. But again, if she's not saying that to your face... I don't know. If there ever comes a time where she does say it to your face, then that's how I would handle that. Once they see how happy they're making... That you are making their son, it'll be all... It'll go away. It'll just take time. Mm Mm-hmm. So, yeah, um, I think just the overall question here was learning to stand your ground for each other when it came to familial disputes or disagreements, and you kind of answered that. I think I answered the question how I would handle it, is just handle it with kindness, with poise, and just, you know, let it be known that that's what you believe, that's what you're standing for, and that people don't need to question you on that because you're allowed to have your own ways and be that way. If that's how you choose to be, you know, like if I have my certain ways and my certain beliefs, I'm allowed to think that nobody can change that for me. So I just need to stand my ground, be nice about it, be respectful, make sure everyone's understanding what I'm trying to say. And that can be the end of it. Thanks. What a great question. Thank you for asking. That That was a great question. Thank you for all the questions. There are so many more that I did not get to add into this podcast, but I will be adding next week and obviously all the weeks after because we get so many great questions on our website www.halfpastchad.com thank you guys we are getting like a response every i would say like hour every hour almost which (laughs) is nuts and we are going 
to make sure everyone's questions get answered. Um, and it's going to be a great time. So thanks. Keep sending them in. Uh, we are writing them all down mm-hmm. and uh, keeping track. So And they're always included in a podcast. So I will be including them in future podcasts. So keep writing them in. Anything that you have, submit them. Half Past Crew, thank you so much. We love you guys so much. We are so happy that you're here. We are so excited for what is to come on this podcast. Please. And I just can't wait for the future. Please like and subscribe, as always. Comment. Leave a Q&A section if you're on Spotify. If you're listening on Apple Podcasts, go to like YouTube. Leave a quick comment. Um, if you are on YouTube, yes, please like, subscribe. Do all the things. Comment. We love reading every single thing. So, as always, thank you guys for listening and watching. We'll see you next time at Half Past Cha. Oh, I'm so cold. My hands are Guys, I am so cold right now.